President Trump says he remains committed to his agenda of building a wall along the southern border and restricting immigration into this country. Just today, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer was asked whether the president's insistence on a wall could imperil American security by getting an anti-American candidate elected in Mexico. Here's how he replied. This is a national security issue, something that, frankly, when he's discussed this with uh, President Peña Nieto of Mexico, that there is at least there is a shared concern about drug cartels, drug trafficking, arms, arms sales over the border. Uh, there is a shared concern uh, for the respect of the border because uh, it means a lot to both sides. Whatever you think of President Trump's efforts, they may be supported by a majority of the public, a thin one, but still, for instance, a recent AP poll found that 52% of Americans believe the risks of admitting refugees outweigh the benefits and arrivals should be restricted accordingly. Jorge Ramos is an anchor for Univision and one of the president's loudest critics on immigration. He joins us tonight from Miami. Jorge, thanks for coming on. Great to be here. Thank you. So at an event several weeks ago in February, you said this, and I wanted to ask you about it, and I, I'm quoting you. I'm sure. a proud Latino immigrant here in the United States. You know exactly what is going on here in the U.S. There are many people who do not want us to be here and who want to create a wall in order to separate us. But you know what? This is also our country. Let me repeat mm -hmm. this. Our country, not theirs. It's our country. Who's the us and the who's the they? Whose country is it? Uh, this is our country. It is yours. It is mine. And it is ours. The interesting thing is that um, with the Trump administration and many people who support Donald Trump, they think it is their country, that it is a white country, and they are absolutely wrong. This is not a white country. This is not their country. It is, it is ours, and that's precisely what I'm saying. Look, in 2044, this okay. country, the white population will become uh, a minority. It will be a minority majority country. That's precisely what I'm saying. Latinos, Asians, African Americans, and whites. It is our country, Tucker. Right. Yeah. Well, let me just point out that you are white. Obviously, you have blue, you have blue, you're whiter than I am. You've got blue eyes. So, I mean, I don't know exactly what you mean by white or Latino. But let me just ask you again to explain our country, not theirs. Who is they? Whose country is it not? Well, many people who want to go back to 1965 when there was um, a white majority. Many people who believe that Latinos and immigrants and refugees shouldn't be here. That's precisely what I was referring to. I, so it's not their the, country? Before the election, it doesn't belong to before, those people? What are you saying? Well, it's also, it's also their country, but it's not only their country. Right. We have okay. to understand that this is a multi-control, multi-racial country, and, um, and we have to live and be tolerant. And that's exactly what I would right. prefer. Well, I it is I our country. Agree with, it I is agree our with country. that. Now, I, would, I, you know, I don't want to bring this to race. You did, so I'm going to follow up on that. You have posited yourself as the leader of Latinos, and I'm not exactly sure what that word means. So Latinos seem to encompass, I don't know, German Guatemalans and Italian Argentines and Afro-Cubans and non-Spanish-speaking Peruvians and, I don't know, blue-eyed rich Mexicans like you. What do those groups have in common exactly? Well, what, what we have in common is that mostly that we come from a, a region in, in the world, Latin America, right. and there are many differences. Uh, many people call them Latinos, many people call them Hispanics. Uh, we tend to speak more Spanish at home uh, than others. Uh, we have not only well, hundreds, but Portuguese, thousands of obviously. mass media in our own language, in, in contrast with what happened with uh, Italians or Europeans before us. So in other words, it's a... Uh, a kind of immigration that has a distinct characteristics that others didn't have before. But what is distinct, again, just to be totally clear, if, if I am a non-Spanish speaking Brazilian, I speak Portuguese, yeah. I'm a non-Spanish speaking Peruvian, I'm 100% German, but I live in Guatemala, and there are a lot of them there, as you know, there are also a lot of 100% Italian people in Argentina, there are a lot of African uh, American, African Latin American Cubans. What do they have in common? They, a lot of them don't like each other. They don't speak the same language. They have very different cultures. It, I don't no, understand no, so why they're under it, one It's not really that complicated. It's, it's simply a, a matter of a country of origin, either for, for you or for your family. Again, most of us speak Spanish. Most of us come from Latin America. About half the Latino population, um, adult uh, Latino population, um, are immigrants. So that's what differentiates us from, from other groups. But mostly has to do with the country of origin. That's okay. It. it still doesn't make any sense to me at all, but as a political matter, it makes a lot well, of sense it because is. it allows people like you to say, I represent everybody on an entire continent, when clearly that's not true.